Welcome to Digital Asset News, take your top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and I'll break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, I've got some concerning news. Bitcoin dumps on news of successful COVID-19 vaccine trials. Even though this is initially concerning, I'm going to show you a little email I got from Kraken, which pretty much lays out exactly where we are and where we are going. On top of that, Kraken announces Bitcoin Cash Fork plans and Bitcoin ABC reveals two-pronged efforts. So I don't know what's gonna happen with this fork, but I can tell you right now, there's a lot of exchanges lined up to give you support on what's about to happen. So before we jump in the market, I just wanna say thanks everybody for signing up to the Dan Teaches Crypto website. Very happy we've had over 1,200 signups in the last 48 hours, and I'm really uh, quite ecstatic about it. It took us a long time to get this going. It's very simplified, very easy, cuts the learning down by substantially. And oh yeah, it's 100% free. So look for the link in the description and uh, go check that out when you got time. All right, so let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is Monday, November 9th. It's around 2.30 p.m. Texas time here in Houston. And uh, even though they, the first article talks about a dip, looks like it recovered quite nicely to 15.4. We're going to talk exactly about news and why it really doesn't matter. So 15.4, it's up 0.7%. Hey, not bad, but 13% for the week. We'll take it. Ethereum's down a little bit, uh, but still marvelous run. Almost 4.50, up 13% for the week. That's good numbers. Tether's tether, roughly around 17 billion. XRP holding strong at 25 cents, like that. Bitcoin Cash is down a little bit, which I do expect a little more volatility, probably on the upside, especially with a uh, hard fork coming up, which I believe people will buy into Bitcoin Cash because they want to profit on what is going to happen is potentially they're going to get two different coins. I'm going to tell you why that's a fool's errand. Also, Chainlink is down at uh, 1%, but still, hey, 1250, I'll take it. Binance coin, polka dot, polka dot still, it's always around 430, 430, 440, 410, somewhere around there. Uh, looks like it's doing pretty stable. Uh, I own polka dot, so I'm pretty excited about the stability right now. Hopefully it does a little bit better, but hey, we'll see. Bitcoin SV down, let's see, what's uh, anything phenomenal? That's what I'm always looking for, anything phenomenal, because this is cryptocurrency. I don't really, I'm not a traditional market guy, so I'm not really looking for like that 2.1% increase and, you know, blow my load or something. I'm just like, wow. Where's the 25% increase? Uh, 6% for Ave. Man, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, uh, 80% for Ave in a seven day time frame is fantastic. I think Ave's gonna do very well uh, over the short term and medium. Who knows about the long term? Celsius Network, uh, $1.89, it's going to hit $2. It's gonna hit $2 pretty soon. And I think after that's gonna go uh, bananas. So I will just say that uh, I'm invested in a Celsius. I'm invested in the platform. 30% of my portfolio is over there. Uh, if you're looking for a link, uh, check the description and sign up. I think uh, with the link, I think you get between 10 and $20 just for signing up if you haven't already. Uh, just check it out. It's a pretty good platform as far as like loans and lending and then uh, actually gaining APY, which is something you can't do at the banks anymore. Anyhow, so uh, that's what's going on with the market. Still a pretty good day in all honesty, but let's take a look at what's going on with this first article. So Benjamin writes, Bitcoin dumps on news like successful coronavirus vaccine trials. So this is always interesting to me to see exactly what's going to happen. The narrative around Bitcoin and gold is that it is, if you believe what uh, Shamath Palihapitiya says, that it's schmuck insurance and that uh, it's for when the markets really just do awful. Same thing with gold, uh, but Bitcoin's better. Um, but now that we have this fantastic vaccine, I think some of the people that know just that part were like, oh, there's a vaccine, it's gonna be awesome, and they're gonna turn around, so I gotta get out of Bitcoin. And that's a huge mistake. But here's what's going on, I'll explain a little bit. So Bitcoin fell approximately $1,000, uh, over 6% between 12 and 3 p.m. today on the vaccine knows, news. It went from 15.8 uh, down to 14.8 uh, based on this trading view data. And I can tell you right now what happened. A bunch of people said, there's a vaccine, I gotta get out because Bitcoin is only a store of value and it's only for when the markets crash. And that's when they got out. Those are like traditional players who don't know what me and you know. We They don't know how far Bitcoin's gonna go. They don't know that it is a programmable money or platform. They don't understand the whole finite uh, argument as opposed to gold. They may not realize that it is the best performing asset class over the last 10 years. It's beaten uh, oil, gold, and any stock ever. And maybe they just think it's a gimmick uh, that MicroStrategy and Paul Tudor Jones and all these big players are talking about and all these uh, institutional investors. Maybe they just don't 
they just don't believe in it like you and I do. And uh, that's why they jump ship. And that's why that's the definition of weak hands right there. Because sometimes people are just weak, but sometimes people are just ignorant. They don't know exactly what's going on. Ignorant is not a bad word. Ignorant is just, you're just uneducated in a specific area or a specific subject. So uh, if they were, uh, they would not have sold, but they did. And that's good for me and you, because hopefully uh, you picked up uh, some cheap Bitcoin, a thousand bucks off. That's a huge flash sale. Anyhow, Pfizer publicized a statement claiming its COVID-19 vaccine has shown to be 90% effective. That's pretty fantastic. The company said its numbers come after testing 43,000 subjects. The vaccine, however, still awaits final approval from the U.S. FDA. And they state, Submission for Emergency Use Authorization, or EUA, to the U.S. FDA. Man, I feel like I'm back in the Army. I was mnemonics. Planned for uh, soon after required safety milestone is achieved which is currently expected to occur in the third week of november and i i will tell you it's pretty amazing how fast it actually was rammed through i used to work in drug research in phoenix uh, in the early 2000s a place called mds pharma services and we would dose and and uh, give these experimental medications to uh subjects who were volunteers and it took years and years and years and it took it cost a ton of money for these big players to get in there and um, it was very meticulous so to see this happen in this amount of time i gotta tell i gotta tell you it's uh it's pretty amazing anyhow the s p 500 bolted up on news uh, almost four percent wow four percent in price at market opening this morning meanwhile gold another still value of asset has fallen more than five percent over the last several hours suffering continued carnage as of publication time that's pretty funny suffering carnage uh also on top of that um different companies had done well with the coronavirus uh, because of all the different things that uh, it has negated video conferencing platform zoom watch its stock decline by approximately 19 percent, which makes a lot of sense right i mean everybody's using zoom now uh, especially for re remote workers or just staying in touch so zoom went up uh, massively and uh you know that is just one of those those technology things that, uh, of course, is great. Uh, Netflix fell almost 10%. All right. Uh, even on e-commerce giant Amazon dropped more than 5%. So a couple of things. This is stupid. You're going to tell me because of a vaccine, people are going to stop watching or watch less of Netflix? Yeah, right. And then giant Amazon dropped 5%. You think people are going to go back to the stores that much? Whatever. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to put more money in Amazon. I own two stocks. I own Amazon and I own Tesla. And I'm gonna put more money into Amazon because once you get the taste of not having to go to the store, you're like, why have I been going to the store? There's a lot better products out there, a lot cheaper, and I, and I can actually save time. So I, I just don't see the the um, thinking behind that. But this leads me to a little, little caveat point. And we talk about whales and the information that they know, because I believe that it's just all about the information that you know that really sets you apart. It's not about what you know, it's who you know, but uh, it's also good to have a little insider information. So there was a little snippet I just kind of glanced over a couple days ago. It says that Jeff Bezos sold $3 billion of Amazon stock in uh, U.S. election week. And, you know, you might have just assumed, well, maybe it's because of that uh, crazy uh, presidential election that went on. Maybe just, you know, just kind of dumping it a little bit just to, you know, uh, be prudent. But what do you want to guess that the richest man in the world maybe has some friends who works at Pfizer or who work for Pfizer or have connections with Pfizer? And they said, hey, guess what, Jeff? <laughs> got a vaccine and it's about to come out next week and we're gonna make a big announcement really fantastic i'll be selling some of my stocks and here we are just a theory allegedly i'm not gonna uh you know dump on anybody for uh, uh making a solid move that that's not insider information i don't know what it is and so that's what's going on now let me know what you think in the comment section the last two pieces i'll say is about the s p 500 and um yeah i guess you know did okay today i mean i don't two percent woo and then uh gold price now gold price did take a little bit of a dump i mean five percent is five percent and if you're if you're a gold bug you're like what the heck just happened well that's bound to but again my personal opinion is everybody should own bitcoin silver and gold and uh if you're gonna take a little dump like this maybe it's time to pick up some cheap gold just saying anyhow let me know what you think in the comments section and this will lead me to my next point which is it doesn't matter about the news right now about what's going on let's take a look of what's not happening today but what's going to happen in the next week month and maybe six months from now and that is all contained within this radical email from kraken so kraken likes to send me stuff 
uh, which I think I'm not special. I'll just be honest. Uh, they sent it to everybody who <laughs> signs up for Kraken. Uh, but this was pretty cool. It's like a little um, snippet of information that they compiled, a lot of good data points. And one of those data points I thought that was pretty fantastic was actually there was there was three, but there's just two here and one one I had to dig for. But it talks about the suppressed pocket. He said 12 times in the past, Bitcoin's annualized volatility bottomed between 15 and 30 percent on average uh, to 140 percent and returning plus 196 percent over 94 days. So when it becomes more volatile, you start to see a huge amount of returns. And that's where we're at right now in this little sector. And we're going to take a look at that. And it talks about the whales and the goldfish. And they say that if demand holds strong, that it really is going to push up the price, which, you know, duh. But really it comes down to is that uh, they, they talk about if whales continue to accumulate like they have been, it's going to push up Bitcoin massively. And we are seeing that right now. And it talks about when parabolic, and it says that it's been uh, trading over ten thousand dollars for ninety-seven days. And when these types of things happen for a hundred-day marker, you start to see some massive price action. So I'm just going to show you the important stuff. I mean, it's all good. I can't link it in the uh, description because it came to my email. So uh, I would just sign up for Crack, and they'll they'll send it to you. No big deal. But here's what it has, and this was pretty cool. They put together the key events and then how that related to the Bitcoin price on the date of the event. And this was great. So they said October 8th, Square announces a 50 million, 50 million Bitcoin purchase. And you got an October 8th right here, a little bit of a bump. Uh, October 14th, Grayscale reports a record quarterly inflow of 1 billion. So take a look right here, eh, a little bit, not too big. And then October 21, PayPal launches a new service, enabling users to buy, hold, and sell crypto. Well, here's 1021 and blah, 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 blah. And here we are right around B. And, there's some, and then there's some things that I thought were big. I didn't even realize what happened, but they didn't really do much for price action. And this is E, October 24th, London Stock Exchange listed mode reveals that 10% of its cash reserves have been allocated to Bitcoin. That's pretty big. So I guess there was a little bit of a price action, not, not too fantastico. And then there's one uh, F, which I thought would be big, which wasn't. Uh, October 26 reports surfaced that JP Morgan wrote in a report to clients that Bitcoin has considerable price upside over the long term. I would think that for the uh, longer term investor, they would be interested in that. But I guess they just really weren't because they're like, yeah, and whatever. You, got, you really in sales and marketing, people got to see something seven, eight, ten times before they actually buy into it. October 27th, the cash web page shows that DBS, Singapore's biggest bank, is launching a fiat to crypto exchange. October 29th, there's news that Iran's cabinet legislation to allow crypto to be used exclusively for import funding by their central bank. Well, why not? Get around those sanctions. And then October 31st, which is I right here, Bitcoin adds October at a 33-month high of 13.8. And people said, wow, that looks pretty good. So that's one of the key events. I thought it was pretty neat, uh, pretty cool how they did that. And then there's a uh, Bitcoin analyzed volatility, and really it talks about how there's just these, these very volatile points, and there's an average, and this is just from dates, this is in you know, 2012, 13, 14, 15, 18, all the way to today. And the average duration is around 94 days. We'll say 90, nice round numbers. The trough of volatility, about 21%, but the peak is at 140%, and the Bitcoin return is almost 200%. So this doesn't happen all the time, we're just talking about averages, but right now we're in that little bubble so I shouldn't say bubble, but you know what I mean. Uh, 724 to now, uh, we've seen some pretty uh, good price action. I think it's only going to go up higher. Also, uh, the rest of it is pretty boring, but it did say here, much like we've seen since March 2020, we anticipate whale accumulation to drive further appreciation. Sure. Supply and demand, right? And then here's what's coming up. Bitcoin ABC team conducts controversial upgrade, which we're going to talk about right now. November 26th or 27th, CME Bitcoin futures expiration date. December 10th, ECB monetary policy meeting. Another monetary policy meeting. Nobody, eh, sure. December 15th, Mount Gox rehab plan submission. How long are they going to drag this thing out? Jeez Louise, Mount Gox, how, how long ago is that? And then uh, Christmas Eve, Bitcoin futures expiration date. January 6th, the FCA bans crypto derivatives. Great. January 2021, PayPal reports Q4 earnings. I cannot wait for that. If the Q4 earnings come out and they start talking about how great cryptocurrency really pushed, that would be something. Because remember, it's only been, been pushed out to about 10% of PayPal applicants or actually customers. So we'll see how this kind of rolls out. But uh, over time, if it really does make a big boom, 
you'll expect a lot of businesses to finally take a little bit of a big, quick view over it. So that's what we got for that. Let's move on to our last section we talk about, Bitcoin Cash. So Bitcoin Cash, we're gonna have a fork, wow. So what is happening, when is this, and what can we expect? Well, there's going to be a Bitcoin Cash fork, and it's gonna be on November 15th, which is coming up pretty quick. What have we got, like uh, less than a week? Hit BTC has revealed the exchange's plans to halt Bitcoin Cash transactions on that day. So if you got, uh, I guess, Bitcoin Cash on that uh, exchange, don't plan on using it. And it plans to credit all users with an additional token if a blockchain split happens, if. Additionally, Kraken has announced plans for the fork as well with airdrop support requirements. So if you have your Bitcoin Cash on Kraken, don't do anything if it's when it splits and uh, there are two tokens, then uh, you're gonna get double. But I'm gonna tell you to wait, because I don't think it's gonna happen. So, I mean, the split's gonna happen, but I, I don't know which chain's gonna actually survive. Bitcoin Cash may bifurcate, why can't they just say split? Due to the introduction of the infrastructure funding proposal added to the Bitcoin ABC code base. Six other Bcash full node clients will not adopt the IFP feature added to the software. Meanwhile, in a surprise twist, novella bitcoin abc announced it will also launch a software client that is ifp free and compatible with bchn and the rest of the full node clients businesses have the freedom to choose between the two chains bitcoin abc's blog post notes so really what it comes down to this a decision on which chain will carry the bitcoin cash ticker on hit btc will be taken after the completion of the fork and then kraken said this we'll support bitcoin cash abc only if the hash power on the ABC network is at least 10% of the hash power on the Bitcoin Cash node network. If we support Bitcoin Cash ABC, it will be called Bitcoin Cash ABC. Well, that makes a lot of sense. On our platform and represented by the ticker symbol, BAB. Fantastic. So here's the thing. I would stay away from this. I would stay away from this. In the past, people would go and they would rush in. They would grab some whatever is about the fork. And like, I'm going to be rich. It's going to be gonna be huge. Well, guess what? Here's a little history lesson. Monero did the same thing. And you know what happened to the uh, Monero private or whatever the, the new one was? It died in the chain. didn't go anywhere. So there's just one example of many. I do not think that there's going to be two types of Bitcoin cash. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to die in the chain. But again, we will see. That's the beauty of this whole process. So let me know what you think in the comment section. And that is it for today. I just want to say thanks to everybody who signed up for the Digital Asset News YouTube channel. I just want to do some random shout outs. Uh, that is uh, Marco Giacomazzi. I think I said it right. Uh, Michael Donath, Ron Drake, No247, P Dub. That's a good one. Uh, Johnny Bitcoin, Joey Serena. Sam Keith, Sergeant Crypto, he's got a YouTube channel, check it out. Mike Minardo and Patrick May. So thanks everybody for signing up for uh, the YouTube channel, really appreciate that. Also on top of that, don't forget, danteachescrypto.com. Uh, there's a link in the description. It's at the very top timestamps. It'll say Crypto Essentials, that is the very first one. So if you wanna learn things about cryptocurrency digital assets in a simplified, fast way, then go ahead and check out the website, it's totally free. All right, those so thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.